more than 3,000 years, secret societies have labored to create the background of knowledge necessary to the establishment of an enlightened democracy among the nations of the world, all have continued, and they still exist, as the order of the quest. Thus wrote Manly P. Hall, the 33rd degree mason, and perhaps the most prolific writer on this type of subject in a book entitled, The Secret Destiny of America. The title of his book is rather alarming. The thought that America has a secret destiny will probably startle those not familiar with secret societies and their plans for America and the world. But that is the claim made by Mr. Hall in his book. He informed his readers that he saw this order coming to America. Men bound by a secret oath to labor in the cause of world democracy decided that in the American colonies they would plant the roots of a new way of life. He then told his readers when these conspirators came to America. He wrote that the order of the quest was set up in America before the middle of the 17th century, meaning sometime between 1625 to 1675. That means that Mr. Hall felt that the members of this order came to America about the same time that the first settlers arrived. Before I continue the video, please smash that like button for me. Thank you. American history records that the first visitors from Europe to the American shore were the English settlers who came in 1607 to be followed by the pilgrims in 1620. But Mr. Hall says that amongst those early settlers was a group committed by a secret oath. But the only name he mentioned as being involved in the order of the quest was that of Benjamin Franklin, one of America's founding fathers. Benjamin Franklin spoke for the order of the quest, and most of the men who worked with him in the early days of the American Revolution were also members. He further identified most of those men as being not only members of the order, but also Freemasons as well. Not only were many of the founders of the United States government Masons, but they received aid from a secret and august body existing in Europe, the Illuminati, which helped them to establish this country for a particular purpose, known only to the initiated few. So a secret society, or several secret societies, decided that America would be fertile ground for the establishment of a new society, or as Mr. Hall called it, a particular purpose. It can be known that those who created the Constitution of the United States and its resulting government were not connected to the order of the quest. Those who created the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution of the United States created perhaps the finest documents ever penned by men. The Constitutional Republic they created was the greatest form of government ever devised by man. They created some problems inside the document, for example it permitted slavery, but overall, they created the most magnificent form of government in the history of the world. It is obvious that these men, even though Hall stated that they were men who labored in the cause of world democracy, could not have been the original founding fathers, because their purpose inside the order was known only to the initiated few. The creation of America's Republic was certainly a public act, made known, it is certain, to every freedom-seeking nation in the world. People do not keep freedom quiet. They let the world know that it has been officially recognized by the American Constitution. Even in nations under totalitarian communism, where freedom of the press is either non-existent or in nearly total control of the government, people know that America did something that only a few other societies in the past had ever done. They had created a truly free republic. Even today, people still swim shark-infested waters, climb over barbed wire fences, and dodge army patrols in the dark of night to come to America because they seek freedom. Free people do not conspire. They make their activities known to the freedom-seeking peoples of the world. It is possible to create a free government. Only those with evil purposes create secret societies, with secret oaths, with particular purposes known only to an initiated few. So the purpose of the order of the quest was not beneficial to freedom-loving peoples, no matter that Mr. Hall says they labored in the cause of world democracy. They must know something that the rest of America does not know. Their cause is evil. Mr. Hall then instructed the reader that the order of the quest concealed their purpose inside the symbols of the Great Seal of the United States. This seal is the one that appears on the back side of the American dollar bill and consists of two sides, what are called the obverse side, the one with the eagle, and the reverse side, the one with the pyramid. Mr. Hall tells his reader. If the design on the obverse side of the seal, or the eagle, is stamped with the signature of the order of the quest, the design on the reverse, the pyramid, is even more definitely related to the old mysteries. Here Mr. Hall connects the reverse side of the Great Seal with the ancient mysteries, the worship of Lucifer as a sun god. The Great Seal was designed and accepted in 1782, but not until several committees appointed by Congress had failed to design one. The first committee was asked by the Continental Congress on July 4, 1776, to prepare a device for a seal of the United States of America, and consisted of three men. Benjamin Franklin, John Adams, and Thomas Jefferson. This committee of three was not able to decide on a design, so Congress appointed a second committee. 
This committee also had difficulty in deciding, so Congress appointed a third committee. They referred the problem to Charles Thompson, the Secretary of Congress, and his designs were adopted on June 20, 1782. Max Toth wrote a book about the history of the Egyptian pyramids and including a brief review of the pyramid on the back of the dollar bill. This is what he wrote. All three committees appointed in succession by Congress between 1776 and 1782 included members holding various positions in Freemasonry. So, those who were deciding the design of the Great Seals were not only Masons, but were quite possibly members of the Order of the Quest. Mr. Hall said that the Order placed their signature on both sides of the seal. So, there is reason to believe that at the very least, some of the Masons were also members of the Order. Mr. Hall then commented. European mysticism was not dead at the time the United States of America was founded. The hand of the mysteries controlled in the establishment of the new government, for the signature of the mysteries, may still be seen on the Great Seal of the United States of America. The Great Seal is the signature of this exalted body, unseen and for the most part unknown, and the unfinished pyramid upon its reverse side is a trestle board setting forth symbolically the task to the accomplishment of which the United States government was dedicated from the day of its inception. He elaborated further. There is only one possible origin for these symbols, and that is the secret societies which came to this country 150 years before the Revolutionary War, about 1620, the date that the Pilgrims came to America. There can be no question that the Great Seal was directly inspired by these orders of the human quest, and that it set forth the purpose for this nation, as that purpose was seen and known to the Founding Fathers. So America has a secret destiny. And that secret purpose was being kept from the majority of America's citizens. But for the curious, there are ways of determining just what that secret destiny is. The symbols of the Great Seals can be deciphered. Americans can know what that future is. Careful analysis of the seal discloses a mass of occult and Masonic symbols. Mr. Hall tells us that some of these symbols have Masonic interpretations. The Masons also have symbols, and have, on a canchon, revealed what those symbols mean. So, it becomes possible to know what those Masonic symbols on the Great Seal mean. James H. Billington has been the director of the Woodrow Wilson International Center for Scholars at the Smithsonian Institute in Washington, D.C., since 1973. He received a doctorate as a Rhodes Scholar at Oxford University in England and taught history at Harvard and at Princeton. He has written a book entitled, Fire in the Minds of Men, Origins of the Revolutionary Faith. He has written about the Great Seal as well. The ideal was, the occult simplicity of its Great Seal. An all-seeing eye and a pyramid over the words Novus Ordo Seclorum. So, the search for the secret destiny of America ends in the meaning of two symbols and the Latin phrase. Therefore, it would be possible to determine the future of America if these symbols could be deciphered. But first, it would be helpful to decipher as many of the remaining symbols on both sides of the Great Seal as possible. The words Anuit Coeptis have been traditionally interpreted as meaning he, presumably the god of the Bible, has prospered our undertakings. But, a far more acceptable interpretation would be that the words mean announcing the birth of. What the symbols are announcing is new. It was still in its infant stage in 1782, and what it is will be explored in some of the following paragraphs. The eagle in the obverse side has very definite mystic meanings. Manly P. Hull gives us one. In mysticism the eagle is a symbol of initiation. Rex Hutchins gives another. The eagle. This emblem is of great antiquity figuring in the symbolic inventory of the Egyptians, as the sun, as wisdom is attained through reason, the eagle is also symbolic of reason. Among the Egyptians the eagle was the emblem of a wise man, because his wings bore him above the clouds into the pure atmosphere, and nearer to the source of light, and his eyes were not dazzled by that light. Since the eagle also represented the great Egyptian sun god Amun-Ra, it is a symbol of the infinite supreme reason of intelligence. Another mason who connected the eagle with the sun was Kenneth Mackenzie. With the Egyptians, the Greeks and the Persians, the eagle was sacred to the sun. Albert Pike also confirmed this connection when he wrote these comments about the eagle a bird consecrated to the sun in Egypt. The eagle was the living symbol of Mendes, a representative of the sun. Perhaps the reason that the eagle was considered to be sacred to the Egyptians was offered by Robert Hieronymus in his book entitled, The Two Great Seals of America. The eagle has been linked to the sun, for it can fly nearer to the sun than any other bird, and is the only bird that is said to symbolically look directly into the sun's rays. Another writer who wrote a book on the Great Seal was E. Raymond Captain, and he added this confirmation in his book entitled, Our Great Seal. The eagle is also supposed to be the only creature that can look directly into the sun. It is revealing that some of the authors appear to understand the symbology of the sun, and others think it is just the gaseous orb that lights the earth. The drawing of the eagle conceals other secrets, and it will assist the student to examine these as well. 
The eagle in the seal has nine tail feathers, and either 32 or 33 feathers on each of the two wings. These are symbols that have to be interpreted. The nine tail feathers of the eagle represent the nine beings in the innermost circle of enlightenment in the Great White Brotherhood, or the Illuminati. There is another explanation, one more acceptable than the one offered above by Stan Deo in his book entitled, The Cosmic Conspiracy. There are nine degrees in the York Rite of Freemasonry, and connecting the York Rite to the tail feathers appears to be the more plausible explanation. The feathers on the two wings also conceal a secret. There are 32 on the right side, symbolic of the 32 degrees inside the Scottish Rite of Freemasonry, and 33 on the left side, symbolic of the honorary 33rd degree. The all-seeing eye above the pyramid has two meanings, both related to the Masonic Order. One explanation was provided by the Masons themselves in an article that was inside a Masonic Bible. It said. The ubiquity of Masonic law was symbolized by the all-seeing eye. The word ubiquity is defined as the capacity of being everywhere at the same time. The Masons are saying that their law, the one that will punish the Mason should he reveal their secrets, is everywhere, and that he cannot hide from it. The second interpretation of the symbol of the eye has been offered by many Masons, including Albert Mackey. An important symbol of the Supreme Being, borrowed by the Freemasons from the nations of antiquity. The open eye was selected as the symbol of watchfulness, and the eye of God as the symbol of divine watchfulness and care of the universe. The all-seeing eye may then be considered as a symbol of God manifested in his omnipresence. So, the simplest explanation of the symbol is that it is the symbol of a deity. And some of the Masons in their writings have told the student who that deity is. One of the Masons who took the next step in explaining what the symbol stood for was Kenneth Mackenzie who wrote this. The eye was also the symbol of Osiris. This was confirmed by another Mason, Carl Claudy. This the all-seeing eye is one of the oldest and most widespread symbols denoting God. The open eye of Egypt represented Osiris. Mr. Mackey also confirmed that the all-seeing eye was a symbol of Osiris. The Egyptians represented Osiris, their chief deity, by the symbol of an open eye. Albert Pike connected Osiris with the sun with this comment from his book Morals and Dogma. Osiris, the sun, source of light and principle of good. Manly P. Hall connected the symbol of the eye with the symbol of the sun with this statement. His symbol, therefore, was an opened eye, in honor of the great eye of the universe, the sun. Rex Hutchins, one of the most recent Masons to write a major book supporting the Masonic Order, also wrote that the all-seeing eye was a symbol of the sun. He wrote. On the right side of a sash worn by a member of the Masons inside the temple is painted an eye of gold, a symbol of the sun or of the deity. Albert Pike however revealed the exact meaning of the symbol in his book Morals and Dogma. The all-seeing eye, which to the ancients was the sun. So, the all-seeing eye is a symbol concealing the Masonic belief that Osiris, a representative of the sun, was a god. And some of these writers have reported that the sun god was Lucifer. So, the all-seeing eye is a symbol of Lucifer, the all-seeing god of the universe and it was placed on the American seal by those who knew what it meant. The unfinished pyramid under the all-seeing eye also has a symbolic meaning, as described by the Treasury Department of the United States government in 1935. The pyramid is the symbol of strength, and its unfinished condition denoted the belief of the designers of the Great Seal that there was still work to be done. Notice that the Treasury Department reported that the pyramid was unfinished, it had no capstone, because there was still work to be done in the United States. The common explanation that the New World Order in the Great Seal was the creation of the Republic under the American Constitution, simply isn't true. That work was finished by the time that the seal was approved in 1782. That means that the work still to be done, had to be completed in the future. The work of creating a New World Order was, in 1782, still in the future. But, the all-seeing eye has a far more symbolic meaning to the Masons, as was described by E. Raymond Captain, the triangle, in connection with the all-seeing eye, is the Masonic symbol of the Grand Architect of the Universe. Manley P. Hall told his readers who the Great Architect of the Universe was, he was the master of the Masonic Lodges, the Mason believes in the Great Architect. Let him never forget, that the Master is near. The all-seeing eye is upon him. The Great Architect of the Universe, is the title of the God of the Masonic Order, but there are some who feel that this god is not the god of the Bible, but Lucifer, considered by these to be the god of some of the Masons. One who has pointed out why he considers this to be true is Edward Renane, a former member of the Masons, who wrote this in his book entitled, The Master's Carpet. An architect is a man who furnishes plans for and superintends the erection of a building made from material already prepared, but God created of nothing the heavens and the earth, and all the host of them, and hence he cannot be a mere architect, and it would be a direct insult to call him such a nickname. The author is one of those who believe that Lucifer is the god of some of the Masons. It has been my purpose to prove that that conclusion is true with evidence from the Masons themselves. 
Some of that evidence has been presented in the material in earlier videos of this study. Other evidence will follow in the remaining videos in this channel. Other Masonic symbols on the dollar bill, as told to the student by the Masons themselves in their magazine, entitled The New Age are, the 13 leaves in the olive branches, 13 bars and stripes in the shield, 13 arrows, 13 letters in E pluribus unum on the ribbon, 13 stars in the green crest above, 13 granite stones in the pyramid, 13 letters in annuit coeptus. On the front of the dollar bill is the seal of the United States, made up of a key, square, and the scales of justice, as well as a compass, which, of course, is an important symbol in masonry. It is quite certain that the student of history will argue that the number 13 used in all of these symbols simply refers to the 13 states that ratified the Constitution. This would be a reasonable explanation, were it not for the fact that the Masons claim the number as one of their own. It appears as if they decided that it was time to form the United States, when the number of states that could be united in the Union reached 13. As was just illustrated, the Masons consider the number to have Masonic significance. They apparently waited for just that time when there were exactly 13 states to form the Union, and not 12 or 14. One who has assigned an esoteric interpretation to the number 13 is Stan Deo, the author who said this in his book entitled, The Cosmic Conspiracy. 13 is the value assigned to Satan. But the key phrase on the back of the dollar bill and inside the Great Seal is the Latin phrase Novus Ordo Seclorum. It means, Novus. New Ordo. Order Seclorum. World the New World Order. The New World Order on the American dollar bill is not the Republic of 13 states created by the Founding Fathers. It is the future 1,000-year reign of Lord Maitreya, the New Age Messiah. Lord Maitreya is the Earth's representative of the Sun God, Lucifer. And the future period is symbolized by the unfinished pyramid, signifying that the future work is yet to be done. It is an easy task to show that the New World Order is not the Republican form of government the Founding Fathers created, because the pyramid is unfinished. Whatever the New World Order is, it was not completed in 1782. And it is not in place yet. America is to bring the new age to the world of the future. Some of this nation's founding fathers said so. There is no question but that the Great Seal has great significance to both the Masonic Order and the Order of the Quest, described by Manly P. Hall, a member of the Masons. There is one final piece to be placed into the puzzle of the entire scenario, and that is to determine why these symbols appear on the dollar bill at all. Why should the Great Seal of the United States contain any symbols that conceal secrets from the overwhelming majority of the American people? especially if those secrets are symbolic of a religion that few in America subscribe to. Arthur M. Schlesinger Jr., in his book entitled, The Coming of the New Deal, told how Henry A. Wallace, the vice president in President Franklin Roosevelt's first administration, asked the president to put the two seals on the back of the American dollar bill. Mr. Schlesinger wrote. The occult fascinated him. He saw a special significance in the great seal of the United States, even more in the reverse of the seal. Wallace did induce the Secretary of the Treasury to put the Great Pyramid on the new dollar bill in 1935. His susceptibility to the occult had drawn Wallace in the late 20s into the orbit of a white Russian mystic, in the tradition of Helena Petrovna Blavatsky, Dr. Nicholas Rorge. Mr. Wallace himself put his recollections of the events in a letter that has been recorded several places, as well as in the book entitled, Our Great Seal. The Latin phrase Novus Ordo Seclorum impressed me as meaning the New Deal of the Ages. Therefore I took the publication to President Roosevelt. He was first struck with the representation of the all-seeing eye, a Masonic representation of the great architect of the universe. Roosevelt like myself was a 32nd degree Mason. He suggested that the seal be put on the dollar bill rather than a coin, and took the matter up with the Secretary of the Treasury. Some Masons created the Great Seal in 1782, and other Masons put it on the back of the American dollar bill in 1935 and it appears that all involved knew the meaning of the concealed symbols portrayed therein. There is an abundance of evidence that the Masons were heavily involved in the founding of the United States and the design of the Great Seal. The Supreme Council of the 33rd degree of the Scottish Rite of Freemasonry has told the student that 13 of the 39 original signers of the Constitution were Masons. Another Mason, past Sovereign Grand Commander Henry Clausen, put the figure at 23 of the 39. It is also interesting to note that there were 39 signers, exactly three times the Masonic number 13. Other Masons assumed responsible positions inside the army fighting for freedom against the English government. 33 generals in George Washington's army and six of his aides were Freemasons. The Masons then and the Masons now are looking forward to the Novus Ordo Seclorum, the Latin phrase on the bottom of the reverse side of the Great Seal. 
Manly P. Hall told the world about the return of Osiris, someday, when he wrote this. Osiris will rise in splendor from the dead and rule the world through those sages and philosophers, in whom wisdom has become incarnate. The return to a worship of Osiris and what he represents as the sun god, the worship of Lucifer, is still in the future. One who told the world that was C. William Smith of New Orleans, Louisiana, in the September 1950 copy of the New Age magazine, the official publication of the Supreme Council, 33rd degree Scottish Rite of Freemasonry. What Mr. Smith wrote is extremely revealing. After the student has learned that Lucifer is the god of some of the Masons, it appears that the way to truly understand what he wrote is to substitute the name Lucifer whenever he refers to God. He wrote. God's plan is dedicated to the unification of all races, religions and creeds. This plan, dedicated to the new order of things, is to make all things new, a new nation, a new race, a new civilization and a new religion, a non-sectarian religion that has already been called the religion of the Great Light. Looking back into history, we can easily see that the guiding hand of Providence has chosen the Nordic people to bring in and unfold the new order of the world. Record 146 Chapter 18 The Great Seal clearly show that 95% of the colonists were Nordics, Anglo-Saxons. Providence has chosen the Nordic race to unfold the new age of the world, a novus ordo seculorum. God's great plan in America for the dawn of the new age of the world. Yes, some Masons truly expect Osiris to rise from the dead and rule the world. The new age, the new world order is near. Some are expecting Osiris to rise. This was everything inside me channel. Please like, share, leave me a comment, and subscribe. Don't forget to hit the notification bell too. And please take some time to subscribe to my backup channels, I will upload videos there too. You'll find the links in the description box. Thanks for watching till the end. Stay safe and healthy.